Hola a todos, my name is Miguel González Duque and this is a small video for ProcJam 2020 about a noise function uh, that I am importing from a different field, from the field of Bayesian statistics and how it could be applied for procedural content generation. The first question that we should be asking ourselves is why? Why is it important to talk about noise functions? The reason is noise functions are essential for terrain generation. Uh, one classic example is Minecraft. In Minecraft, they use uh, noise functions to generate landscapes, to generate caves. The one that they use, which is the most common one, is called Perlin noise. And this tutorial is not going to be about Perlin noise, though. If you are interested in learning more about it, I would heavily recommend Adrian's Soapbox tutorial in which he discusses not only Perlin noise, but how these noise functions in general can be used uh, combined with uh, fractality. Or I could also recommend uh, Sebastian Lack's tutorial on landmass generation, which uses Unity's implementation of Perlin noise. This tutorial is about a different noise function and this noise function uses the normal distribution, uses derivatives and uses linear equations. These are all the prerequisites that you will need in order to understand what follows. Let's talk about how, how this idea works. The core component is to make assumptions either about the slope of the function, the first derivative, or the curvature. If we assume that the slope is distributed normally, we get plots like the, like the ones we see on the left hand side. And if we assume that the curvature is distributed normally, we get plots like the ones that we see on the right. We can use these assumptions about the derivative of f to construct an approximation. Uh, the idea is to construct f in a grid, let's say in the interval between 0 and 1. Uh, we will segment this interval into n plus 1 points, x sub 0, x sub 1, x sub 2, all the way up to x sub n. And to set up the notation for what follows next, it's good to notice that the distance between these two points is 1 over n. Uh, let's call it h. And let's call our approximation of the function at each one of these points f sub i. The question is then, how do we compute these f sub i's uh, using our assumptions about the derivative of f? Well, remember that the derivative of f is just given by the limit of the difference between two consecutive points, for example, f sub 2 and f sub 1, divided by the distance between them as this distance tends to 0. So if the distance between them is small enough, we can transform this uh, limit to an approximation. We can say that the difference between two consecutive points is just approximately the distance between them, h, times a number. And the good thing is that we know we are, we are making the assumption that this number is just normally distributed. So we can just consider it as something that we sample from a normal distribution. Putting this approximation in terms of our f sub i's, we get that the difference between two consecutive f sub i's is going to be given by a number h times another number that we are not, uh, sampling from a normal distribution. That appro approximation gives us a system of equations. Uh, let's assume, for example, that f sub 0 is just 0. And we get that f sub 1 minus the previous one uh, is equal to h times some number that is normally distributed. And then we can keep going uh, for the next pair of consecutive points and so on and so on up until we get to f sub n. The good thing is we can write this system of equations in matrix form and the following matrix appears. Uh, a matrix that has ones in the main diagonal and that has minus ones in the sub diagonal below it. 
Uh, notice that these f sub i's are precisely the ones that we want. These f sub i's gives us our approximation of the function that we are trying to com to compute. So let's introduce some notation here. Let's call this matrix, which is very important, uh, L sub 1. Uh, let's call the vector that we want to uh, compute f. And let's, com let's consider this uh, bunch of numbers that are normally distributed as just the vector f prime. This then transforms into the following equation. And if we want to get to know f, we just need to solve this system of equations. And for example, if you are if you are working on Python, uh, NumPy has a way of, sol of solving them, or you could just compute the inverse of this matrix and send it the other way. Uh, there are several ways in which we could solve this, this system of equations. Notice that this gives us an algorithm for creating noise. The way this algorithm works is just by choosing an n, which is the number of points that you want to ap uh, approximate, and by choosing a standard deviation. Uh, you can just sample a vector from a normal distribution. This vector has size n and has a standard deviation, the one that you chose. And as soon as you sample this vector, the noise, your noise function, or at least or at least its discrete approximation, is given by the solution to this system of equations. Uh, rem remember the, the L sub 1 matrix that appeared times f uh, is given by h, which is 1 over n, times that vector of normal noise. I want to talk a little bit more about this matrix L sub 1. This matrix L sub 1 is very important in mathematics and it's called the, the finite difference matrix for the first derivative. And in a, in, in a sense, you can think of it as a discrete approximation of what it means to take the derivative of a function. If you have a function in continuous space and you consider a, gr a grid of points in an e interval, computing the derivative uh, in the continuous space is almost like multiplying by this matrix L sub 1 and then by n because rem remember there was this h on the other side of the equation. So there is this bridge between the, the continuous functions and the discrete approximations of those continuous functions and you can take the derivative even in the discrete case. You could say that almost in the same way there is a, an approximation of taking the second derivative of a function and this discrete approximation of taking the second derivative is given by a matrix L2 which has uh, minus 2s in the diagonal. Oh, I, I made a small mistake here. This one should be a minus 2 and this one should be a 1. Uh, is this matrix which has minus 2 in the main diagonal and 1s in the upper diagonal and lower. This is called the second order finite differences. Uh, and they can also be thought of as a discrete approximation of taking the second derivative, as I was saying. So you could also be using this matrix L2 in order to compute uh, functions which you believe or you, you want to have a normal uh, distribution for their second derivative and you will only have to replace L1 for this L2 and N for N squared. If you want to learn more, I have a blog post in which I expand on these ideas and uh, consider, for example, the extension to 2D space. You can also use this same technique to create a random noise in uh, two variables. Thanks for watching.